Let's talk about some running backs, shall we? Let's get into this a little bit. Um, first up, he should be rostered already um, on your team, on every team. Um, he is more than 50% rostered in ESPN leagues at 55%. However, we are mentioning him here because he needs to be rostered in every league, and that is Cam Akers. Uh, Cam Akers... We said that he was, I mean, the YouTube video we put out last week literally was Cam Akers league winner uh, after he went 21 for 72 and a touchdown against Arizona last week. And he is still only rostered in 55% of leagues. All the Henderson, Daryl Henderson truthers came out and said that, oh no, it's still a split backfield. How do you it's give 20? It's not. So what, what happens against New England? Cam Akers, 29 carries, 171 yards, averaging 5.9 a clip, two catches for 23 yards on the ground, 20 fantasy points in half PPR scoring. He's the guy. They have the Jets up this week. Cam Akers is probably going to drop 30 on the Jets, and they're at Seattle in week 16. Like, it's going to be a bananas finish. He's going to finish white hot. I hope to God that they don't draft a running back in the off season and, and he's the, the guy for next season. Um, but holy crap, man. You know what this reminds me of? Was it two years ago when Derrick Henry did nothing for the first 12 weeks of the season and then each of the last four, uh, each game for the last like four weeks in a row, he was rat- rattling off like 100 to 200 yard rushing games. Um and then last year he blew up and now this year he's blowing up again. It was like there was the little preview, the Derrick Henry preview. This is this is the Cam Akers preview is what you're seeing here at the end of the year. Um, I Hopefully you guys catch on to it and you don't let him slip past you in next year's drafts. Depending on how hot he finishes, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes at the end of the first round. But I think he's a great second round pick anyway. In drafts next year, but uh, I I I wanted him so bad, and I got stuck with Dobbins instead because I thought he was, I thought he was in a less stubborn offense, um, and that showed itself. But turns out he was just biding his time. Uh, yeah, it was two years ago, 2018, where Derrick Henry had 585 of his 1,059 yards in the last four games of the season. Um, including that 99 yard touchdown run against Jackson. Oh my God, I remember that. Uh, week 14, uh, um, as part of his 17 carry, 238 and four touchdown oh. score when, when literally nobody was playing him anymore because they were sick of watching him have, uh, I mean, his game log is hilarious from that year. If you go and look at it, it's just pathetic. Oh, I um, know. Yeah, everybody had quit on Derrick Henry and now he's, uh, potentially RB1. Um, going forward which is will top be fun to talk about five in the for sure top three maybe yeah um so yeah cam Akers. uh we talked about him last week uh hopefully you were listening to us um and said hey this was even three weeks ago when we blew up about how crappy all the wafer players were um but we still said to add cam Akers um as a as a potential late late season stash because rookie running backs come on you're seeing with jonathan taylor you're seeing with cam Akers. you're seeing a little bit with dobbins um so yeah something to kind of make mental notes of is don't give up on on these young running backs until they get time to learn the offense learn pass protections um so yeah one spend all of your fab on cam makers period yeah period end of story spend it all on cam makers if he's still there he shouldn't be there um what i will say is this for people that are still listening to fantasy podcasts we, we could- love you in week 15, uh, I think you're going to put yourself at an advantage going into next season. One of my takeaways um, is about all rookie running backs in general, and that is to continually remind yourself that these players did not have a traditional preseason with the OTAs and all those workouts in the preseason games and learning coverages and uh, picking up blitzes and doing all of that. Um, and so for rookie running backs, when it's ever so essential to be able to do that, to stay in on third down or in passing downs and the two minute offense in general, 
these guys were weeks behind. I feel like where most rookies are traditionally yeah. when they start contributing. And yep. so that's why you're seeing them only start contributing now in the double digit weeks when, you know, usually it's like the halfway mark of the season. You'll see guys pick up in the second half, like a mile Sanders did last year in a tra- traditional year. So, yeah. until so he got hurt. Yeah. And, and I would say, <laughs> and, and I would say too, that, um, you know, maybe it's, it's one of those things where, as soon as rookies start having down weeks, you know, like week four, five, six, seven, um, you know, have them be trade targets and you will probably don't have to give up that much and hope they boom at the end um, and just, you know, give up not much for a, a potential uh, bomb at the end to to win it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's stuff that we talk about every year, but, um, you know, it's just uh, doing it next year. So, yeah, if you have Cam do Akers, congratulations, congratulations. Do it. Just do it. That was my wow. shot. That was Shia LaBeouf. No, you didn't get that? Okay. No. Well. Just do it. All right. Whew. Man, I'm going to pull a muscle. All right. Uh, next up, we That's have a lot of, DeAndre. A lot of exertion there. I uh, was. I got a vein popping out of my head right now. I thought next that was a up, pimple. <laughs> It's my unicorn <laughs> horn. That's where I get my special powers. Next up, we have DeAndre Washington of the uh, Miami Dolphins. Um, throwing it back to me, a me. Let's see. Uh, DeAndre uh, rostered in a whopping, Miami. whopping 20% of leagues. And this astounds me. How is DeAndre Washington rostered in 20% of leagues? But a guy like Cam Akers is only rostered in 55 DeAndre Washington had a whopping 13 for 35 and two for 17 through the air. 15 touches. Okay. Put up 6.2 fantasy points. Has New England up this week. You hate to see it. Um, at Las Vegas, like it doesn't excite me at all. But if the usage no. is there, if the is usage it? is there and, uh, and Gaskin is a no-go, then I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's still there, right? Like Gaskin is on the COVID list. He's going to miss next week against the pay, the Patriots. So maybe, I mean, I would think, I guess there would have to be like some gymnastics around like when he first started showing signs and symptoms in that for him to be potentially eligible to suit up um, considering that they have to wait 10 days. But I mean, maybe Savin Ahmed comes back, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would think that Deandre Washington is still the guy there, but it's against the Patriots, um, which doesn't excite me. So maybe it's not, maybe it's not, I don't, I don't, he's there, but I would say he's an absolute desperation flex. I would call him what a low end, low end RB two. I mean, at the best, you can't trust him. Um, if, if we're, we're talking about the Miami dolphins running game, which I mean, they don't have a, the only person averaging over five yards of carry on their team is Ryan Fitzpatrick or sorry, over four yards of carry is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, Salvin Ahmed's 4.2 Fitzpatrick's five yards of carry. Everybody else is basically under four. So that, that is pathetic. Like they've never had an offensive line. They didn't last year when Patrick Lord was running for one yard of carry. Um, I mean, even when Miles Gaskin was having his best games, um, I mean, he's still under four yards of carry. He was makes he was making up on receptions, right? Um, and so, I mean, Washington had two catches this past week. You're looking between him and Lynn Bowden Jr. Who Bowden? Um, I mean, he had some catches, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I, ugh, I mean, yuck. Miami no Dolphins thanks. running backs are averaging as a collective whole 15 and a half points per game on the season. Um, on average, the 
New England Patriots are giving up 22 and a half fantasy points per game to the running back position uh, over the last four weeks. That number drops to 20 points per game, which is middle of the pack for both of those. I'm just saying they really only use one running back. I could see he's going to have double digit points, I think, or close. Anyway, I think he's an eight to 16 point play in half PPR in PPR. I think he's a 10 to 20 point play. I would be shocked. I mean, I, I, I think somebody's coming back that that's injured and, and it won't be. Well, if that happens, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't I, like it. You know, yeah, I'm not, he's, he's not like run out, go get him. I think he's he's a stash if you have roster flexibility and it, and it's a zero bid. Do you think where where do you think he'll end up as an RB three? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I mean, I don't know the. The backfield is kind of in a void all around after you lose like the top one, two, three guys, right? So yeah, right. Man, all right. Next up, we have the guy that, much to the chagrin of Raheem Mostert managers, will not go away. Stupid. And that is Jeff Wilson Jr. Roster. What you talking about, Wilson? In a whopping eight point four percent of leagues. Jeff Wilson had 11 for 31 in a score on the ground. He also did have one catch for 13 yards, put up almost nine fantasy points. Um, Moser was evaluated for a concussion at one point during the game, which is interesting. Um, maybe they just, I, I hate this backfield. I hate this team. I hate Nick Mullins. Um, <laughs> yeah, but they have Dallas yeah. in Arizona. Like, they, like, I I want the starting running back against Dallas, don't you? Sure. Can you tell me who it is? Well, regardless of the health of everybody surrounding him, the carry the carry split for the last three weeks, Jeff Wilson's portion has been twelve carries, seven carries, and eleven carries, and he has three receptions in those games. So, if he's getting double digit touches against Dallas. Sure. Um, yeah, I uh, I would not want to put a lot of my stake into a 49ers running back where you just don't know what's going to happen. You haven't relied on them all year because if you have, you're probably not still playing. Um, and I mean, most are 16 carries, nine carries, 14 carries. It's basically, it's very close to an even split. Um, so I, if the only way that one of them is a great play is if one of them is out. Well, look at the, look at the, look at the snap percentages over the last three weeks, Mostert and Wilson. Uh, three weeks ago, Mostert 40%, Wilson 35%. Last week, um, uh, Mostert 44%, Wilson 46%. This week, 49% Mostert, 48% Wilson. It's a 50-50 split. You know, God. I mean, that's what it is. Awful. And they use trickeration at the goal line to rob the running backs of meaningful touchdown opportunities. Yeah, that is Jarek McKinnon. <laughs> <laughs> well, McKinnon wasn't on the field at all this week, and he only saw uh, two two snaps last week. But but yes, I mean normally it's it's the it's the Debo end around or without Debo, it's R. Brandon Ayuk, who was in on ninety one percent of plays uh, last week and is a stud. stud yeah, and poor a Kendrick Kendrick Bourne doing something yeah. weird. Um, so yeah, again, bench stash. Hope one gets hurt. Um, and the other one will be great, but it, it they're both going to play. It's a good matchup. Um, it's not just good though. It's very good. Dallas is giving up the seventh most fantasy points to running backs. Like, <laughs> yeah, but who are you going to play? Mostert or Wilson? Mostert. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying it. Like do, he, where he's do you got, think? I feel like he's got the better chance of breaking a long touchdown run. Where do you think Wilson finishes? Is he an RB2 or an RB3? Three. Three. It basically comes down to who's going to score the touchdown between the two. Yeah. 
Well, you got this week it. it was Wilson. Right. And um, that Monday night game, was it a Monday night game against Buffalo? Um, or whenever they played. Um, they, um, you know, they yes, basically it, rotate, they rotated who was getting the goal line touches um, in multiple series. So, I mean, again, it's it's anybody's guess. Um, yeah, that's so, right. What was it? The first series, it was all uh, Wilson. It was all Wilson. And he put most in the game. Yeah, correct. And then the second series, it was, Mostert got two quick carries and they threw the ball. So it's like, it just sucks. Um, I, Mostert, I thought, had like a top five upside this year. And, you know, he because of injury and because of just that backfield, he's, he's greatly disappointed. Um, and so at this point, I would just stay away from both of them. Absolutely agree. All right, next up we have Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard rostered in about 21% of leagues. Um, seeing some snap share increases over the last couple weeks and some rushing attempt and just general attempt increases, um, opportunity increases given the health of Zeke and their very much dwindling playoff hopes. Um, had 11 rushing attempts for 39 yards, also had two catches for nine yards and a score. He's basically the reason why I did not make the semifinals in our Wah. big money Wah. league because all of a sudden Wah. it's a split backfield. And uh, yeah, evidently um, it just wasn't, it wasn't great for me. Uh, he only played 37% of snaps relegating Zeke to a whopping 63. So that's still RB1 Wah. totes. He just didn't get the call. It was Tony Pollard. Maybe they rest Zeke and just get him healthy. And Tony Pollard turns into a sneaky good flex play Wah. the last couple of weeks of the season. They they have San Fran and Philly the next two weeks. I don't think that that's very appealing, but unless I would only start him if Zeke sat. Yeah, I'd like to apologize for the listeners for that uh, um, that crying in the background. For those of you that did not know, that was not my four month old daughter. That was just Jason talking. Um, so I um, I don't. I, t- Tony Pollard is is a handcuff for for handcuff season. And uh, yeah, you like You're that such one? Such an ass. Where <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, keep it down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um so the yeah audacity it, yeah the um i i feel like tony pollard is and I'm, I'm gonna reach for a joke here a little bit i mean his initials are tp and i feel like he's been cleaning up the shit that that zeke has been doing all year because it's he's been not great um, we, we talked before the Ugh. beginning of the season where we thought that Zeke had like the highest floor for any of those top four running backs. And it turns out we were way off. Like that floor apparently is not that high. I know offensive line injuries came into play a little bit, but Tony Pollard has straight up looked like the better back whenever you watch them. He looks quicker. He looks like he wants to be there. <laughs> um, Zeke got paid a crap ton of money a couple of years ago and probably doesn't want to get hit anymore. And He's like, peace out. Like, speaking of Zeke, I'm rich. I made so I I made a trade for Zeke in our big big money league, as you know. And uh, looking back on it, this was it was a trade of I hate these two guys, you hate those two guys. How about we just flip them and see how it works out for the two of us for the rest of the season? Now I, I got the better end of it. Uh, cause it was, I traded away James Connor and DJ Chark who oh God was, I mean, those two oh are just God. complete colossal disappointments in the second half of the season. At least, at least you could bench them. Yeah. But I got back Robert Woods and Zeke who, God, that's just a steal either way. It was a steal, but yeah. Bobby trees also let me down this week and cost me big with five and a half points. So it was like. It was like crap Wah. for crap. It was crap for crap. I'm just saying it was like, what a year for trades and how some people just absolutely tanked this year. What's up, DJ Chark? How you doing, bud? Yeah, <sighs> that stuff. Um, so Tony Pollard, probably not playable against San Francisco this week, but 
just put it on people's radar is that, um, you know, he's he's definitely eating into Zeke's shares. And if they were to lose um, against San Francisco, I would not be surprised to see Zeke pop up on the injury report and not play week 16. Um, so just uh, um, just something to pay attention to. Next up, we have Philip Lindsay rostered in 44 percent of ESPN leagues. Um, had a whopping four points this week. Woo! 11 rushing attempts for 24 yards, two catches for seven against Carolina. Has Buffalo and the Chargers to finish off the season. Alex, this was more of an ad of yours. So why don't you tell me what you like yeah. about Philip? No, I, I don't really like all that much about him. Um, honestly, it, I'm just putting it on people's radars. One, this is the first season in his career that he will not have over a thousand yards rushing, which is, again, a, a disappointment for people that were potentially banking. I, mean, I know Melvin's been there. Um, Melvin's court, ga- court case was supposed to be today. Uh, we're filming this on the 14th of December, and that got pushed back to January. So if Melvin was going to be suspended the last two games of the season, then... Philip Lindsay would have been a priority ad. He is obviously not going to be suspended, um, but I would not be surprised to see Lindsay kind of break out. He's had 25 carries the last two weeks um, and he had 25 carries the two weeks before that. Um, so, you know, averaging somewhere around 12 and a half carries a game. So he's getting the, the touches. Uh, he's just not doing anything with them. So um, I would not be surprised to see him really break out week 16 against the Chargers. Um, probably not so much against Buffalo this week. So there you go. I'm going to leave him there. Um, I think that he, I, I would pick up any of the guys that we previously listed over Philip Lindsay. And I agree. if you were really desperate, I would put zero bucks on Philip Lindsay. Um, yep. Brings us to our last ad, which is Lynn Bowden Jr. And he is running back eligible. So that's why we are mentioning him here with the running backs. Um, he did have one rushing attempt against Kansas City for two yards, but hold on. He had seven catches for 82 yards against Kansas City. Uh, finished the day with almost 12 fantasy points and a half PPR scoring. He had nine targets. He led the Dolphins in catches and receiving yards and tied Matt Collins for the team leading targets. Um, I mean, Devontae Parker, Mike Gesicki, and Jakeem Grant all left the game with injuries. So I would say monitor the injuries. If there's a couple of those guys that can't go, then I think Lynn Bowden could potentially be viable. Um, as a absolute desperation hail mary <laughs> he's rostered in 0.6 percent of leagues uh which i think our joke is that that means that the only people that roster him are his family <laughs> it's and crazy and their home leagues um, Yeah. so desperation hail mary to lynn bowden if nobody else is healthy yep that's it 